Welcome! In this video we will look at graphics commands to create the game of life with the PowerBasic console compiler. Today we're going to use the PowerBasic console compiler to recreate a classic game of life. Since we'll be using the graphics window in this application we'll set the console off so it will not display a console window. So there are a number of global variables I'm going to set up for this application. First of all a handle for the graphics window we're going to be using, a multi-dimensional grid for our playing board. This grid will support a two-dimensional surface on which the game will be played. There will be a third dimension of two elements which will be used to store the current generation and the next generation and we'll use the global long slot variable to keep track of which of these elements we're currently processing. The grid will have a maximum size both in X and Y and we will determine the maximum size of the screen you're currently using. And then from that we will determine the size of each grid slot. We will also have a global to keep track of how many generations you want to run and we will display the generation on the screen in a font. Now the program will support the displaying of grid lines on the screen. We will control that with the long grid on flag. If that's false then we will not display a grid. So since some of the population is going to be done using the randomize function we want to first of all make sure it's well and truly randomized by giving it a parameter of the timer. Now we're going to be displaying a font on the screen so we'll need the font command and we're going to set this as 14 point. We'll prepare some of the globals up front. We'll have the width of 160 boxes and the height of 96. We're initially going to run it for say 10 generations and just to prove we've got the grid displaying correctly we'll turn the grid on. Our initial grid slot is going to be 0 and now we want to design our game. First of all we'll need a routine to create our grid map. Then we'll need to seed it and then we'll want to run the life cycle. And then after that's run we will use the graphic wait key to wait for the user to press a key. And once that's done our program has completed and we will free up the area of memory that's been used to create the font. So let's create our map function first. Now what we're going to be doing first of all is we'll create a couple of local variables for the row and column and we'll redimension our grid which is the global grid to be the x and y coordinates that we specified at the beginning and to say that it's going to have up to one third dimension. So we'll have a 0 and a 1 and this is our game grid. Next we have to work out what the resolution of your primary screen is. This will populate the long x and the long y variables which are globals with the x and y sizes of your screen resolution. Next we want to create the graphics window itself. Now we're going to create the graphics window with no title so effectively we're going to hide the title bar. Uh, it's going to be for the size of the current grid plus a little extra and we're going to pass that to hwin which is our global handle for the graphics window. We're then going to attach the graphics window and we're going to use the redraw command. Use of the redraw command is quite useful. It allows you to draw stuff onto the graphics window but not actually display it on screen until you issue the graphic redraw command. This vastly speeds up the speed of writing to the graphics window. We're setting the colour foreground to be white and background to be black. And we are then clearing the entire window 
to the color black. And we're setting the font we're going to be using to the font we've declared earlier. Having done that, we need to work out how big each of the boxes are actually going to be. Well, how we do that is we take the resolution that we got for your screen, for the width, and we divide it by the number of boxes we're actually going to have on the screen. So that gives us the size, both X and Y coordinates, of each cell that's going to be displayed on screen. The next thing we want to do is decide whether we're going to display the grid or not. So we're using the long grid on to determine whether we draw a graphic line or not. I'll just fold that round so you can see it. Graphic line is a line from the X coordinate to the Y coordinate and we're drawing it in white. So we have two other functions to set up. We'll just set skeletons of those up just to test our code so far. And we'll see if that compiles cleanly, which it does. And if we run our code now, it will display our grid on screen. Now this proves that we've got our code handling correct. And for the next run, we'll put we'll turn the grid off. As we just want to see the cells we're going to display on screen. So the next thing to do is to actually seed the grid. Now in here, what we're going to be doing, you can set specifically up patterns that you wish to initiate the game with. What we're going to do in here is we're just going to randomly put them in. We're going to use the random function to give us a value between 2000 and 4000, and that's going to be the number of cells we're going to deposit onto the grid. And then we're going to run from the first to the last, and we're going to determine our x and y coordinates randomly between 1 and the total number of boxes width and height and then on the grid in the current slot we're going to mark it as a 1. A 1 in that grid position will show us that this cell is alive and if it's a 0 then there is either no cell or the cell is dead. So having seeded the grid our next step is to run a life cycle. So if we go to that piece of code, what we're going to do initially is we're going to just display the grid. So for each generation that's run, we need to have a routine that displays on screen the current state. So a new function. Now display grid is going to have some local variables. Basically we're going to use long x for 1 to the total number of boxes wide and long y from 1 to the total number of boxes high. Then we could use an additional variable to work out exactly the pixel coordinates on screen and the same for the y coordinate. Then we're going to test the location in our grid for these x and y coordinates for the slot we're currently processing, which at the moment is 0. And if the value in here is 1, in other words if there is a cell there, then we're going to set the colour to green. If there is no cell there, then we'll set it to black. And then we can quite happily use the graphics box command to draw a box. So what it's doing is it's picking the coordinates of the box and the size of the box. The 20 number is the rounding on the corners and our edge colour of the box and the fill colour of the box. So the box is going to have a black edge and is either going to be green if there's a cell there or black if there is no cell there. And at the end we will then use a graphics redraw command to refresh the graphics screen. As I said before, using graphics redraw vastly improves the speed of the running. So having got that in place, if we run this now, what it should display is the initial state of the grid before we start running each generation. 
And there it is. Randomly populated cells. So what we're going to do now is for each generation we're going to use the rules for the game of life to work out whether the cell will survive to the next generation or whether it will die. So if we go back to our life cycle, what we're going to do is a for next loop using our generation variable. And our first task is to advance the slot. So if we're currently in slot 1, then we mark the next generation to be slot 0. If we're in slot 0, we mark the next generation to be slot 1. And then we need to run through for each of the boxes in our grid. And again, this is another for next loop. Going from 1 to the total number of boxes wide and from 1 to the total number of boxes high. So basically for each grid square on our grid. Now we need to determine the cell outcome for this particular cell. And we're going to create a new function which is going to determine whether the cell is going to live or die. So either the cell is going to survive, or there is going to be a new cell created, or the cell is going to die, or it is basically still dead. And if it's going to be created or survive, then we mark the grid for the next generation to be 1. Otherwise we mark it as 0. So we'll come back to this cell outcome function. But after we've been through all of the cells, our next task is then to mark the current slot as being moved on to the next generation by updating the global slot variable. And then having done that, we'll then redisplay the grid using the function we have already written to display it on screen. And just to finish off, we will display a blank graphics box on screen, basically to wipe out anything that's at the top left hand corner of the screen. We will set our position to that location. We will write with a foreground colour of green and a background colour of black. And we'll mark in there, print to it, the generation number. We will then redraw the graphics screen and then sleep for 200 milliseconds. And then go on and process the next generation. Now once it's actually got through all the generations, we will then display a message on the screen to the user to say it's complete and to press any key to exit. So all we have to do now is to create the cell outcome function. Now this function takes two variables, the x and y coordinates for the grid we're actually dealing with, using the long slot to point to the current generation. Now the rules for the game of life depend on the number of neighbours a current cell actually has. So we'll need some variables set up to allow us to keep track of how many neighbours a cell actually has. Long neighbours will count the neighbours and these other variables are going to be used to point to the cells surrounding the current cell we're actually processing for. So initially we want to look at one less than the x-coordinate we're in, up to one plus, and one minus, and one plus for the height. If the coordinate is exactly the same as the one we're dealing with, then we'll use the iterate command to go on to the next number. That will skip on to the next for next loop. Now since there should be wraparound on the grid, so if you go too far to the left, you will appear on the right hand side of the screen. We need to have some logic in here that works out how we're actually looking at something beyond the edge of the screen or not. So this involves a few if commands going in. Basically to work out if our number for the x coordinate is less than 1, then we'll mark it to be the maximum number for the right hand side and so on. 
And if that's the case, the next thing to do, since we've established which we're looking at, is to work out whether the pointer for the location surrounding the current location is 1, then we increment the long neighbours. So we know the slot next to the cell contains a live cell, so we'll advance the number of neighbours. And once we've been through all the surrounding values, we'll know what the neighbour count is. So if the current slot is currently active, which is our x and y coordinates and current slot, then we know the cell is alive, otherwise the cell is not alive. So if the cell is currently alive, we need to decide what to do. Well, we can quite happily use a select case statement based on the number of neighbours. If it's less than 2, then the value of returning to the function is to say die. If it's 2 or 3, then we survive. If it's anything greater than 3, then we mark it as dead. And if the current cell is dead, we use the same approach with the case statement. Based on the number of neighbours, if it's 3, then we create. If it's any other number, then we mark it as still being dead. And this will be interpreted in our code if we look up. And these values here, create, survive, die or still dead, are used to set the value of the grid to either 1 or 0. So let's just compile that now to make sure it's OK, which it is. So if we run that now, we're running through 10 generations. I know we're happy with the code running. We can increase the number of generations. Let's try 50. And we can see some cells die off fairly quickly. Some remain quite static. And some do expand quite rapidly. And there we go. Well, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this short description of the game of life. Uh, I'll leave links in the description below to the Wikipedia page if you want to look at more. Thank you for watching.